Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to create uh, the classic asteroids game in Godot. Um, we're gonna add stuff like um, movement with inertia and we're gonna um, add movement along the path for the UFO, the collisions and the simple UI with uh, few lives and also uh, if I'm able to crash a asteroid you will see that we have the invincibility frames during which our player cannot be harmed so yeah let's get right into it uh, so um, I've got comment um, on my last video that the audio levels of my voice aren't really correct and that I'm too quiet. I will try to fix this for that video. Uh, let me know if um, this is all right. I tend to speak rather quietly, so maybe um, I have to bump it up during the um, rendering of the video. So I'm gonna start with a new project here. I'm gonna just browse it to some nice place like Game Dev Godot. That's good for me. I'm gonna create a new folder here and call this Asteroids Tutorial. I'm gonna select that folder. The renderer, we're gonna use the forward because, well, I don't see any reason why not to. Virtual control metadata is gonna be Git. And of course, um, you will find the a link to the repository somewhere below in the description. So let's create our wonderful um, project. Let's switch to 2D. And let's start by bringing in some assets that we actually need. So I'm going to create new folder here and call this assets and these are going to be the graphical assets um, maybe let's add another folder because we will probably have to add a font gonna call this sprites or textures both are good and let me see what can I get whether I can just drag and drop the snow I have to be smart about it. So showing file manager. I'm just gonna you don't see this because I'm doing this on the other screen, but I'm just clicking and bringing all the sprites. Okay, so uh, let's quickly take a look at the sprites. And this is asteroid in four versions engine throttle because we will add a very simple animation of our engine and then we have lives player square and this is probably our projectile and then ufo cool um i'm going to do few things at the start i'm going to create the main node which is going to be just a node and i'm going to go and create a folder call this scenes <clears throat> and i'm gonna call this main let's rename this to be main 2 mm, so this is going to be our main scene um as a reminder everything basically in Agodo is a scene and what you do is that you compose them together to create a game um, and the first thing I want to add is camera to deep. So now you should probably see that this is the area of our game that's going to be rendered into the screen. Let's see whether we have to change anything. Actually, yes, we will change the zoom to be 0.5, which is going to extend the area of our game. Cool. Uh, what else do we need? Basically, this is enough for now for the setup of our main scene. But I'm gonna change some settings in project settings. First is the background. 
if you write clear here in the in the panel for the clear settings it's gonna bring us to rendering environment because we're searching for default clear color and turn it all the way down so it is perfectly black cool um another step that we might want to do is setting up the whoops is setting up the input for our game and this is rather simple go to input map and we start typing our actions so rotate right um, and that's gonna be the key then rotate left and that's gonna be a key then i believe this is thrust or you could just get the call this go forward or whatever um and this is gonna be w and then shoot and that's going to be space okay so this is the basic setup very good coffee um and we have to start working on our player so let's do just that we can go to scene new scene and choose other node and that might be counterintuitive but we're gonna use character body to d for our spaceship even though it's not a character with legs and, and arms like I don't know Mario or some kind of soldier. This is the um, this is the correct node to use when we would like to co control the movement of a player. Even here in the description, you can see specialized to the physics body node for characters moved by script, which makes sense for us. Okay, and uh, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the sprite. So a child node, sprite to D, and the texture is gonna be player. And this, okay, this is going to determine the shape of our collision. Because um, if we add a rectangle or a circle, it's not going to really be precise so the other thing we can do is to add polygon collision polygon to d okay and then uh, as you can see here has no effect on collision cool but uh, what we would like to do is to uh let me extend this add a set of points that's going to describe our polygon uh, for the collision calculation and it is really easy here because as you can see we have one two three four points that we can provide to the polygon array so that our collision shape is matching perfectly with our sprite shape so let's do that i'm going to set this to four and I already know the values because I came prepared and this is minus 42 for the first one, 32, 32 for the second one. And then we have 0, 16, and then we have minus 42 and 32. Uh, yes, now it refreshed. So now it looks correct. We're gonna rename this to player, and i'm gonna save this as a player okay cool mm, what else do we need uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to take both of these and i'm going to rotate them 100 degrees uh, because right now if we take a look at this yeah so here you can see that this 
is our Y positive axis. So this is like the front of our spaceship, right? And before, without that, the front of my spaceship would point towards the negative Y axis, which would screw up our movement. So let's select both of these and let's change the rotation. Cool, and basically I believe this is the time when we can start scripting away our movement. So let's add a script um, and I'm going to call this player movement because I will try to keep everything separated and this script is going to handle our movement. Okay, we can get rid of everything, um, well, almost everything, and we can name this, so we can use the um, autocomplete a little bit better, and I'm going to export a few variables here so that they are accessible from the editor. Uh, max speed, let's set this to 10, export var rotation speed. 3.5 so how fast we rotate either left or right um, we will be working with inertia so we have to have some kind of factor describing how fast our how much our um, spaceship will slow down each frame I'm gonna call this velocity damping factor and set it to 0.5 and then a linear velocity which I'm going to set to 200 um, yeah and this is fine so what we're going to do is we are going to also need input vector describing what our user provided as an input and this is going to be of type vector 2 and also rotation direction uh, which is going to be int uh, I'm gonna say that this is minus 1 0 or 1 which means rotate left do not rotate rotate uh, right we could also use an enum here Sorry. And we're gonna split uh, the process of calculating the input and providing it to our character body in um, two functions. We're gonna use the process function to calculate all the data that we need based upon the user input. And then we're gonna use the physics process to actually apply the movement. Okay, so input vector x we can get input get action strength uh, rotate left minus input um, get action sorry input get action strength rotate right let me extend this a little bit so that you can see and maybe let's bump up oops a little bit too much let's bump up the, the font size for you to see it better and then input vector y this is input get action strength trust Okay, and um, we have to decide upon our um, rotation direction. So let's see, input uh, is action pressed, uh, rotate left. We can say that we're rotating left. Um, else, if input is action pressed rotate right 
rotation direction is equal to one else set the rotation direction to zero so if nothing is pressed then well we're not rotating and that should be enough uh, let's go to physics process where we will apply the movement so physics process and if you don't know this function um, is going to be called basically every frame to read the input and this uh, also but you should use that function whenever you're working with physics because of how internally the engine is working and uh, maybe I will prepare a video um, describing it uh, in uh, more details regarding the differences between process and physics process but that's a step for the future future let's focus on our game so here i can apply the rotation which comes as a property of our character body 2d because we are extending that class i can just say t equals rotation direction times rotation speed times delta and you always have to remember to apply the to multiply times delta to incorporate the differences between uh, how different machines are calculating and how fast they are okay and then if input vector y is greater than zero we're gonna call a function here and i'm gonna call this accelerate accel rate forward with English being very hard and pass the delta there else if um, input vector is equal to zero so we're not actively pressing forward but the velocity is not equal to zero and velocity is also a pro property coming from the character body while describing the, the velocity. So if we're not pressing forward, but we're still moving using our inertia, inertia, then we should slow down and sub with delta. Okay, so let's write those functions now. So first is oh, we need the column here. Uh, slow down and uh, uh, sorry uh, we can start with I'm gonna copy the name because it's hard to type um, and Delta which is a float okay so here we're gonna to we're going to take the velocity and add to it uh, input vector which we calculated right here um, times linear velocity times delta but and this is going to be um, the value of a vector 2 because it's vector times um, scalar times scalar value but we need to uh, take into account the fact that user can go forward accelerate forward and rotate in the very same time so we're gonna rotate it um, and the angle is of course the rotation cool and then we just say that we should limit the length to max speed and uh, what this is is basically us saying that uh, we can grow the velocity up to some kind of value that's why we're limiting the length of that vector because let me use the magical paint here uh, we are working with um, with uh, vector 2 which basically has an oops some kind of let's say this is the y value for the vector and then we're gonna have x value 
of our oops of our vector and this is x so then uh, we would like to know the length and length is going to be if i remember that correctly um like that because the length the length is calculated as a square root of x value of the vector plus y value of the vector which is like the pythagorean uh, equation right and if we limit it to some kind of value like for example this is going to be the length right if we limit that value then we basically have um, our spaceship limiting its movement to maximal speed cool powerful tool for teaching paint i love it um yes so that's why we're limiting it and we need to write the other function which is going to be slow down and up with delta in a float let's bring that up a little bit maybe okay so we have to write that our velocity as we're slowing down is lerp and lerp is linear interpolation between the current velocity and vector 2 zero with velocity damping factor times delta and let me explain that we will be going from the uh oh this is not correct now it's correct we will be going from the current velocity as we are slowing down towards zero and every frame we're gonna um, decrease the velocity times that value so it will gradually slow down each and single frame. And then we have to stop. So if velocity y is greater or equal minus 0.1, and this is like arbitrary value that I have chosen, and then velocity y is less or equal 0 0.1 we will just set the velocity to zero right so if our velocity is in this range from minus 0 0.1 to 1 we just say okay that's like slow now sl slow enough now you can stop and yeah that should basically be it uh, let's try and place our player in our main. So I'm going to go instantiate child scene and I'm going to add the player and let's see. Oh, no main scene. Uh, select current. Yes. Okay, we have that and we can rotate, uh, but we are not moving uh, forward. Uh, maybe I have a typo somewhere. Let me see. Um, get action strength trust uh, project settings W this looks correct and of course I know what I forgot to did to actually move we have to call a function here and we're gonna use move and light and we're gonna pass the velocity times delta that should fix that issue yes and as you can see we can now move across our screen and as i let go we're, we are gradually slowing down until we stop which is perfect and we can rotate and move forward at the same time of course, we're not supporting uh, moving uh, moving backwards with the uh, S key, right? 
because well that's not in the game um okay one thing that we're missing for now is that the fact that whenever i go out of the bounds of our camera right i should pop up on the other side of the screen for now we're just going and going so uh, let's handle that um the same principle of movement like going out of the bounds of the screen is also going to apply to our steroids so let's create a separate component for that so i'm gonna just um, create new scene use the empty node for that um and i'm gonna call this i'm going to call this screen bounce movement okay cool um and we have to write a script here so it should be generic enough to handle both the player and asteroids and we must remember that it is camera dependent because the camera that's the limits of our screen bounds. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to set the note here as a note to D that we would like to move because it has the global position and that's enough for us. Also, the bounds do we need now we're only need we are, we're only need the bound so this is going to be object with um keys and with values so standard dictionary okay let's see we need the um current rect which represents the visible rectangle of our viewport so i can go just oops, get a viewport to get the information about the viewport and then get visible rect then i need the information about camera so i can go camera um get viewport i can access this globally as get camera 2d then the zoom of the camera is camera zoom then current camera position is equal to camera position then the size of our actually rendered uh, viewport right is rect size divided by zoom and we are dividing here because the um the bigger the zoom the smaller the visible rectangle and from that we can actually calculate the bounds so the top is camera position y minus size y divided by two bounds bottom is camera position y plus size y divided by 2 bounds right is equal to camera position x plus size x divided by 2 and bounds left is equal to camera position x minus size x divided by 2 Cool. And with that, we can actually um, handle the movement out of bounds. So we have to check if node, uh, node global position y is greater than bounds bottom. If so, we set the node global position to be bounds top and let me quickly sketch that for you 
it, the concept is rather simple. Let's say that our node, our spaceship or our um, asteroid move moves outside of the bounds of our viewport. What we do is we, whoops, uh, let's get this back to red. What we do is we're just gonna say, okay, you moved out of the bounds, therefore I'm gonna pop you back to a screen like just above, I mean below. The same principle goes, of course, for example, for going left and popping out right here. So we're checking the position, which is gonna be in the middle of our node to see whether we move out of the bounds of our screen and then moving it to opposite side. Don't save. Okay, else if um, note global position y is less than or equal to bounds top node global position y is equal to bounce bottom and the same goes here so basically what i could do is just copy this then do a node global position that should be y okay we're gonna work with x here so replace that um, then change this, change bottom to left and change this to right. Okay, so here we're handling the cases of movement outside of the bounds. And as you can see, it does not depend of our, on our player or anything else. So this is very generic, which is very good because we can apply and use this anywhere. So here I'm just going to compose that. So instantiate child scene, screen bounce movement. And now if, oh, I need to, um, yeah, probably what we have to do here is to apply the node that interests us. And this is gonna be, uh, can I just, okay, you're not helping me. And this is gonna be player node. So let's try this again and it is almost correct let's check our main here this is the player sets in zero 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 i might have a typo somewhere let's see yeah of course uh, i have a typo that should be like this okay and now we're back in our place and if we move to the bounds of our screen we pop back on the other side which is perfect let's see where we can actually go up yes wonderful so now we have that um let's maybe now focus on spawning our asteroids so what i'm going to do is i am going to add new scene and we need the uh, functionality of spawning and managing our asteroids so what i'm going to do is i'm not actually going to start working with the asteroid scene itself but rather asteroid spawner which is gonna be responsible for spawning our asteroids so let's find an empty node and let's just call this asteroids spawner and save uh, and we're gonna attach a script call this asteroid spawner 
um, get rid of that and let's add a class name so class name asteroids spawner cool okay um let's start by exporting few variables um and let's say how many do we need so the asteroids count right uh, and I'm going to say, I believe that in the original game, we start with six. And what we are going to need is to somehow spawn those. So... Probably we now can go and create the asteroids themselves so new scene and let's take a look at the asteroid and i believe we should extend area to d because we would like to have the ability to collide with those so and also at the script uh, let's rename this to asteroid and Mm, what we want to have here is let's save this yes and then let's start working on it so first thing is of course in the sprite let's switch to, to d maybe and i can just provide simple asteroid uh cool that is correct so that's how one of our asteroids will look like and and what now well we probably need to set up the um the collision shape so uh let's see collision shape and we can go with a circle here i believe and the circle has a radius of 64 uh and why isn't it oh no sorry 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 it's here should be one and here the radius okay which is well good enough for our case right so we have the basic um setup we also have to add our uh screen bounce movement which is perfect uh, and it's going to uh, then have the ability to move out of the bounds of our screen and that's why we decided to use the separate scene for that and why we made it generic okay let's go maybe to the uh, asteroids itself so let's add a script called this asteroid and I would like my asteroids to have a different look right we have four variants here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create oh i'm going to first add the class name class name asteroid just to know what is what then we have image array and this is uh can we find this maybe we can even be smarter and just drag it yes perfect drag and drop it wonderful so this is going to be uh the array of the paths to our sprites remember to add a comma between them okay one two three four perfect um then what we need is the speed All right so export bar speed 100 uh, and then we 
Mm, need to make it move. So... Let's say function ready. We need to determine the speed. So uh, we have the speed. Oh, we have to determine the direction. Okay, so run find something from minus one to one and find me something from one to one here too and we will need a direction of our movement so let's call this direction and make it vector two Direction uh, is equal to vector 2, x and y. Okay, and then the movement is going to be rather simple because all we need is to say position is equal to direction times speed times delta. Okay, and that basically should be enough for now for our asteroid and we can go back to our asteroid spawner and say that we need uh, asteroid scene uh, which is a packed scene okay uh, and asteroid scene is empty, but here in the scenes we can find our asteroid scene. We can drag and drop it. And now it has this value filled. And we can go to main and instantiate our asteroid spawner. And it's not going to change anything because we're not spawning our asteroid yet. So what we need is the random position to spawn our asteroid. So where on our screen should each of our asteroids be placed? So let's try this. Uh, we will need the access to camera. Uh, or do we need this? Um, no, not really. So basically, I can just say for i in range of count, uh, get me the random spawn position using we will create that function get random position from screen rect and having long names isn't anything bad in programming so we can say get random position from screen rect and uh, if you want, you can also say what given function should return. Uh, I can say that it should return a vector two as a position. So you just create the arrow and then add the type that you expect. Okay, and this is going to be um, pretty much the same. Uh, as uh, what we did here, so I can just get that, copy it, so these are the bounds of our screen. Uh, why does it say that it has... Uh, here is the problem. Okay. Yet random. That's a typo. Um, 
there is no bounds identifier but I can just create this here and then it's a matter of calculating the X and Y which can be calculated at, as a rand E range uh, from bounds um, left to bounds right and this just says get a random integer value from that value to that value and for our case these are the screen bounds so from the left to right screen bound and the same is gonna go for y so y um, this is going to be from top to bottom and then the position is going to be return vector to x y okay and that basically gets the random spawn position for our asteroid and now we will need a function to spawn the asteroid so yeah let's create that function so i'm going to call this spawn asteroid and we pass random spawn position here let's create that function um spawn asteroid uh, with position of vector 2 cool so we get the asteroid by instantiating it asteroid scene instantiate as asteroid um, we have to add this to our game so get three root uh, add child uh, and we'll call the third at child call deferred because there might be some issues with with um, engine being busy placing everything on our screen asteroid and then the um, position of our asteroid so global position should be the random spawn position which is position okay that looks correct the question is whether it works and nope uh, oh because we did not pass the uh, node to our asteroid so let's get here and this is missing the reference so let's give it a reference try again and yeah we have asteroids uh, so the next and as you can see they're moving in a random direction and they're uh, moving properly when they reach the bounds of our screen the next step is going to be the collision um, probably between our player and an asteroid so that's going to be the next step so moving on to collisions we actually have to discuss what happens whenever the um, spaceship collides with um, an asteroid for once uh, we see some particles exploding right so we'll need some kind of um, particle system a uh, two a player is losing one of his lives and three finally the uh, asteroid is being split into smaller chunks so uh, let's start uh, with handling uh, different sizes of our asteroids so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to create a um, simple way to handle the asteroid size right uh, so let me see 
Um, okay. Well, this information is going to be shared. So I'm just going to create something like new folder here. We will need to use it in different components, information about sizes. So I'm going to create, let's say, utils folder for utilities. And here I'm going to create new script. And I'm going to call this um, utils. Sounds good to me. And I'm going to actually clear everything and it's not going to be a node this is going to be just a script i'm going to call this uh, class name asteroid size in um asteroid size and we have few values here it starts as a peak then on collision it's being split into medium and finally into small okay cool Let's use this in our asteroid spawner. So I'm just going to say uh, const utils, and I would like to load this for us to use. So preload, search for utils, and now I should have the access to utilities. Okay, so whenever we spawn asteroid, we have to have the information about the size we'd like to um, to spawn here. So I'm gonna say size of type utils asteroid size. And here for start, let's close this. We are using the big size. So let's say utils uh, utils dot asteroid size dot big. Okay, cool. And then as it's getting spawned, we're going to pass the size down so that our asteroid knows how to render itself onto the screen. Uh, so we have that. And then in our asteroid, I'm going to say that Oh, we always we are also using the utils so let's preload that cool and the starting size for each asteroid is always going to be big okay that's how each of our asteroids starts us then we will have to uh, calculate our wonderful uh, our wonderful scale size so um, scale value depends on the size and this is the simplest way we could do that so for example the big enum has value of zero because they go from zero to one to two so one divided by zero plus one is equal of to one so we're not changing the scale here if we have medium which is one the scale value is one and a half which is like a half smaller than the big one cool so um i can now say that the scale of our asteroid is equal to vector two scale value scale value which is perfect and then uh, also what i forgot to do is to randomize the image we're displaying for each asteroid so let's do that let's search for um random index of the from our array is rand e divided by uh, i mean rand e modulo image array size and that's the random index from our image array and then random image is equal to load uh, image array choose random index 
a random index and that's gonna read that um the position under that index from this array and we're getting a random image here and we can apply this so we need the reference to a sprite but that's not a problem because we can go here and say already bar sprite is equal to sprite uh, and we can say that right texture is going to be random image and now we should have the images randomized um let's see yeah we can see that the now we have different um different images for our asteroids which is very good so we are handling the the um, images properly and now we have to set up our collisions um so we're gonna start by setting up the layers that we need in our um in our wonderful project so let's go to project settings go to general search for physics and we're going to use layer names and we will provide different layers because some things should interact with each other when it comes to collisions some should not for example asteroids shouldn't collide with asteroid and for example player shouldn't collide with its own bullet but should collide with asteroid so let's uh, set up the uh, layers first is player then the bullet and we're gonna say that's the player bullet asteroid ufo which we're gonna add to and ufo bullet okay and we can close this and then a most important thing is to assign them correctly so going to our asteroid oh uh, let me see the asteroid as an area it exists on the layer number three so when you're reading the layer this is the layer on which given body or area exists so of course asteroid exists on an asteroid layer and then here in the mask we decide with what it should collide so it should collide with a player with a player ba a bullet with ufo which we're gonna add and with ufo bullet okay so i exist on that layer and i'm listening to collisions with those layers okay and um that's basically create the matrix of collisions that you can use to interact between elements in your game cool uh, so let's go to player now and set up collisions here so player um where is it collision it ex uh, exists on layer one and it should collide with ufo bullet um and I believe that's enough because we can handle the collision of a player with an asteroid and not with a player code. So let's see whether we can actually get the collision. So here in the asteroid, I'm going to go to no tab and search for area enter. And I'm going to click connect. And here in the asteroid script, I'm going to create on area entered function and i'm going to just print collision here if something enters the asteroid let's see whether we can get the collision between the player and asteroid if i can 
hit it correctly and I don't think it's working right now. Let me check. No, I don't think it is. So we're missing something. Let's see. Okay, and uh, this is not going to work because um, of differences. We here have asteroid, which is Aria, and here we have the mm, the player, which is like moved by physics. So. Um, we have to have the collision polygon 2D here attached to a player because it wouldn't work otherwise, but our um, collision detection is based on areas. So what I'm going to do is add area here, and duplicate that polygon, set it as a child. So if I hide this, uh, sorry, if I hide this, you can still see that we're using the same area but we're not using this collision attached to a player um, to detect the collision, but we're using the area 2D because our, um, because our asteroids are also area 2D. So now if I try and run this, I should get the information that the area, yes, entered collision. And um, as you can see, we could probably also use the body entered here without that. So uh, let's see whether that's correct. So I'm going to just delete this for now. Right. And in our asteroid, I'm going to listen to body entered. OK, and here I just say body entered and let's try this yes so since our player is character body here we have to use different um different method because we're listening for the body that's going to enter instead of aria so here are some differences you know you could use arias you could use body we can uh, work with a body uh, for now, but we'll also work with areas later. So let's see how we can um, how we can handle that. So this is body as body node to D. So I'm gonna check for a few things. I'm gonna say if body is player, and we're using the class defined here so we can check what actually collides with us um, probably I would like to destroy my player right make it disappear so let's say um, body uh, QE Q3 and uh, it is complaining of the mix spaces and taps okay let's let's see whether we're colliding yeah we destroyed our player when he collided with uh our wonderful um with our wonderful uh asteroid okay so that's one thing uh, next thing that we have to do so basically you can remove that from now disconnect and get rid of that so what should happen we should emit some kind of explosion so let's try that um let's go to scene new scene uh, and let's search for other and search for particles and i believe we are searching for CPU particles to D. Uh, so that's going to be our first um, particle system. I'm going to call this explosion particles. Let's save this. Uh, let's add a script for that explosion particles. 
uh, and uh, we have to configure that and the particle systems tend to be a little bit complicated but I will try to guide you through everything that we need so emitting is off ammo is set to, uh, set to 6 so how many do we need um, how long should the particle system be alive 6 seconds one shot yes just run this once uh, speed scale explosiveness bring it up to maximum of one other things can stay the same then drawing we don't need anything emission shape is gonna be point uh, particle flux don't need this direction is gonna set to one and spread to 180 uh, gravity does not apply because we are in space um, initial velocity and I set this to 1 to 8 and 2 to 3 uh, I'm not gonna guide you through each and single property of the uh, explosion particles uh, but I can prepare a tutorial about explosion systems in uh, particle systems if you want right now uh, we're just trying to finish the game and um, the problem is that the tutorial is going to be pretty long believe me so let's see uh, we don't need damping we don't need a uh, twinned angle actually yes from 0 to 180 a scale amount 3 to 3 um, yes do we need a texture nope nope the color is white and basically that's it um, <coughs> sorry one thing that we also would like to uh, do is uh, we would like to get rid of any um, trash or any leftovers so basically whenever asteroids getting hit by a player or a projectile we're going to present the particle system and it's gonna play for six seconds and after that it will still be in our tree in our game's memory which is like a waste of resources so we can set up the simple timer to basically get rid of it once it finishes playing so let's add a timer here and let's add a simple script mm. let's say on ready get the reference to a timer and let's see our timer is basically one shot and i can say timer wait time is actually equal to lifetime which is six in our case timer timeout connect <laughs> sneeze uh, whenever it runs just cure free so get rid of that um, particle system and here we're going to say if is emitting so if the emission of the particle system started and timer is stopped then start the timer so if we started the emission and the timer isn't enabled just start the timer and after it runs out just get rid uh, of that scene cool so we can go back to our um, asteroid and we can add a child node is uh, our instantiate child scene which is going to be explosion particles uh, and get the reference to it so on ready of our explosion particles is equal to explosion particles which is cool and then 
Um, let's say... Uh, let's create a function here. Call this emit explosion. And we're taking explosion particles. And we'll say emitting to true. Uh, and here we can also call create on destroy. So what should happen when we destroy a given asteroid? Uh, we should do emit explosion. Definitely. And we should get rid of that asteroid and it's gonna create some problems and i hope i can show it to you right now so let's crash into asteroid and nothing happened because we have to call this so on destroy and try that again so i'm going to the asteroid and yeah what happened with my particle system it should display or something well the Explosion particles are attached to asteroid and what we are doing is we're telling it to play to start emitting and automatically we're getting rid of that asteroid and the particle system is a child of asteroids so it gets removed from the memory as soon as we remove the asteroid from the memory. So there's a one simple trick we can do here. We can call explosion particles reparent so move that to another parent and the parent can be get tree root right and then it's gonna get that explosion particles and move it to the root here let me show you that if we click remote you can see the root here right uh, and it should play yeah, and then it's going to get removed after a few seconds. You see, disappeared from the memory. I'm going to show that to you again. So we keep our hierarchy nice and tidy. After like six seconds, it's gone. Perfect. So uh, we have that handled. Uh, of course, um, our asteroid should be split into uh, the smaller asteroids. So uh, let's think how can we handle that. Probably we should extend our asteroid spawner. So let's get to it. Something should happen whenever our asteroid is destroyed so here we have our asteroid mm, so here we're gonna have a signal in our asteroid that informs us about the destruction right so let's create a signal here i'm gonna call this on asteroid destroyed uh, size we have to pass the size to know what next size should our asteroid be whether it should small, spawn medium asteroids or small so asteroid size and then the position of the uh, destruction of our asteroid because um, we should spawn the new asteroids from there so um Let's go to our on destroy and let's say new asteroid size. It's going to be this size plus one. Okay. And on asteroid destroyed should be called and emitted with new asteroid size and current global position. Um, and we will use this in asteroid spawner to get the information that, well, something was destroyed. So, yes, 
asteroid. Attach a listener. So on asteroid destroyed, connect to asteroid destroyed. Let's create that function. So asteroid destroyed size and position. We could say that uh, this is asteroid size and this is definitely vector 2. So what should happen? Um, let's see whether this is connected properly. So some stupid uh, asteroid destroyed. As some stupid console log just to see where that kicks in. And it did not. So what are we looking here? Let's add the debug here. This should be called. Right, and we can then step over. Uh, that doesn't really matter, but we have. Oh, OK, there's an error. Um, error calling from signal cannot convert what you cannot convert. So argument one from into object. Uh, let's see. New asteroid size. So, OK, can we make this an int? Uh, this is the debugger. Um, let's play this. Now, to, yeah, okay, we have this in output. Perfect. So we can go to our asteroid spawner. Uh, where is it? Oh, not that script. That script. And start working. So. Um, if size is less than uh, two, I believe, we should spawn two new asteroids. So for E in range two, uh, we should, because once you destroy one asteroid, you should spawn two new asteroids. So now I can just say spawn asteroid with new size and with the position. And since we have that function already and we're passing new asteroid size, it should all be good. So let's see. Yeah, we have two new asteroids. Um, the problem is that as far as I remember in the game, um, every single time you spawn an asteroid, it gets a little bit faster uh, whenever the size is smaller. So the big asteroids are slow, small asteroids are fast. So let's go to asteroid and let's adjust that. So um, here we can say that we have the speed and then we ha can add export var speed increment factor, let's say 0 0.3. And then somewhere here, we could readjust the speed uh, saying that speed is equal to speed plus uh, speed, yes, plus speed times the size times the speed increment factor. 
and now they should be faster. So let's try and cr crash into something. Uh, as a up. Oh. Okay, yeah. I can I can see that they are faster. At least this one is. Um. Okay, cool. What else do we need? So we have the ability to um, to crash into asteroids. What we need is the ability of our player to shoot. So let's do that. Let's go to player, player, and we need to tell from which point should we uh, actually shoot. And that should be the front of our wonderful uh, spaceship. So let's go to 2D and a child note. Note 2D because we need the position. I'm going to call this shooting point. And let's place it at the very top of our spaceship. Maybe even here. Let's check the transform. Uh, basically, it should be pretty too, right? Just to match the other values. And what we need is a script. Uh, so we will need a bullet. Yep. So let's create new scene. Let's call this. Let's use Aria. Uh, call this bullet. And we need a sprite, obviously. And the sprite is going to be just a square. Oop. Let's save this as a bullet. Uh, let's see. What do we need from our wonderful bullet? Um, I don't think that we need to change much here, but we will need the collision shape, uh, which is going to be rectangular. Yes, let's match it. Okay. And let's start scripting. The script is going to be rather easy. And mm, mm, this is going to have the class name of bullet. We'll have a direction. Di direction, which is direction, which is going to be vector 2. Uh, we can adjust the speed here, export bullet speed, and I'm going to set this to 700, and during the process, we just need to adjust the position, direction, times bullet speed and don't forget the delta so this is basically almost everything we need for our bullet so let's start shooting so shooting um we will need the bullet scene so i'm just going to we could preload that, but we can just apply this from editor. Bullet scene, which is like back scene. Save this. And now it should require the reference. Uh, shooting. Uh, why did I lost it? Oh, I didn't... Wait. 
I did not add this to the proper place. Of course, this is screen bounce. Here we need a new script. I'm going a little bit too fast and this is going to be shooting or let's call this player shooting. Cool. Now we can add that and it will require the bullet scene which we have here quick perfect and now we can worry about shooting so we can handle this in the process so if input is action just press and this is different from is action press because uh is action press is being called when you press and hold the key so it is being called continuously where uh, is action just pressed is going to just listen to that first press so it's like in case of shooting it's like auto versus semi auto right and we'd like for each space press to spawn a single bullet that's why we're using is action just pressed shoot uh, then we need a bullet, so it's going to be bullet scene instantiate um, us bullet. We're going to add this to the uh, root at child, um, and we have to have to have the shoot direction. So let's add this var shot direction is equal to vector zero one rotated because we have to adjust for the parent rotation. So get parent um, rotation rotation bullet and the parent is going to be uh, in that case um the player right because we're getting the parent not of the bullet but the parent of the shooting point so bullet position is gonna start as global position and bullet direction is going to be shot direction cool uh, let's see whether this works and yeah we have our shooting which is for now going straight across our asteroids. There's gonna be one problem though. As you can see, as I'm shooting, I'm spawning bullets and they're not being removed from the memory. So what would I love to have is the ability to remove the bullets once they're outside of the screen bounds. And thankfully this is rather easy to achieve. We can go to a bullet uh, to a bullet scene and what we can do is we can add a special node which is called visible on screen notifier and you can uh, read the description the text when the node extends are visible on screen okay uh, so let's create that and we will probably need to listen to a signal here which is going to know screen exited and I can connect that to my bullet the where this is we don't need extra arg argument on visible screen exited okay and here we're just going to call QV3 and that should solve our issue so let's try this let's go to remote let's check our bullet list and let's start spawning those and as you can see they're popping up and being removed right as they leave the screen perfect okay what's the next step um the next step is detecting the collision between the asteroid and a bullet so let's go to our asteroid inspector here we're we are listening to the collision with a bullet 
but it has to be on a proper layer. So if you go back to a bullet, oops, and let's see, bullet, area, collision. Uh, it should exist on the second layer, which is a bullet, and we should listen for a collision with um, asteroid, right, and UFO, and this is correct. And since this is a Rhea, not a body, we have to go back to our asteroid, go back to a node, and then listen to for Aria entered. So let's try and print here bullet entered and let's see where anything pops up yes so we have the information about that so here we are listening for the information about the player because it extends the character body and here for a bullet because it extends the area so let's decide what should happen when we hit the bullet so um, now let's determine whether this is a bullet actually so if area is bullet we should destroy the bullet so area q3 and we should basically call our own destroy function so do the same stuff that would happen if you were to crash into a player and is that enough Yes, it is. And you can see that it's coming along pretty nice, right? We can get rid of our um, of our asteroids, but I can see that we have a mistake here. It should be size or equal because for now we were only spawning the um, asteroid once only hit and now it should spawn to medium and if i try to hit it please now it spawns on also to small cool and if we hit it it still um gets splitted okay cool uh, we have a lot of stuff done but uh, that's not over yet so what we have to do probably is to there's so much stuff to do still let's let's go and add another um enemy which is gonna be our ufo so let's create a new scene um and that's going to be um, just a simple note let's call this ufo Owner. Um, let's add it to the main already so UFO uh, sorry this should be instantiate char scene UFO spawner let's get into it and let's start hacking away so for the UFO this is going to be interesting I would like it to follow a specific path Okay, um, and this is going to be interesting. So we will have to basically create a path to follow. So let's add a child node and let's uh, add a path first and we would like our ufo let's use a paint again so i would like to have a some kind of path that our ufo will, will follow and will shoot um basically into random direction and one's gonna be on the top of our screen and second maybe different path right at the bottom and i would like our a UFO spawner to randomly choose the path for UFO 
and that's gonna be our UFO to follow. And then also it should shoot some projectiles towards our asteroids and our player. So um, we have to create a path that um, can be followed by UFO. And one gonna be uh, up, up, left, right. So one path at the top of our screen, which will, um, which our UFO is gonna follow from left to right. And then second path, and I'm gonna call this path bottom right left okay cool uh, and i'm gonna give them some values so let's start with the position and i have this set to minus four minus one four nine two and minus six four two Okay, and you can see being here, right? And running that properly. The other one is going to be, I have this files prepared. One, four, seven, five, four, nine, four. Okay, so you can see this starting um, from left to right, and this is gonna start from right to left. Here we have curve 2D, uh, which is going to be described by a set of points. Uh, and I have a values for them. So uh, top left right has five points. So, or yeah, five points. And they have those values. and five, three. Then we have then we have um, next is going to be and you can adjust those you could even let me just you just grab these and manipulate them in editor by hand. But if you'd like to follow along, I have the, the proper values for everything. So let's set this back to... But you can create your own path and it's all good. It's just going to be different than mine. That's not a problem. 1012. Uh, six, three, and then two, seven, two, uh, oops, not here, not here, other element, um, two, seven, two, uh, two, one, one, and add another element because we have five of them is going to be zero 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 okay and this is the representation of our path so our um ufo is gonna start here and probably go from or no it's gonna go from maybe here because how of how our points are arranged so i arrange them uh from uh this is the right from right to left Right. Okay, it, it can go from right to left too. It's fine. Uh, let's focus on the second one. Um, points. Let's see the values that we need to provide here. So this is going to be 1, 1, 5, minus 10. Then minus 5, 8, 6. One, three, two, um, then minus nine, nine, minus forty-five, nine, 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 nine. 
Okay, then minus one five eight zero one three nine um minus one six two one minus twenty three and the last one the fifth one is Oh, maybe I have even more points here. Minus two, one, two, oh, nine, four, ninety-one. And yeah, basically, that's it. These are the points for uh, our UFO to follow. As I said before, you can adjust them as needed. And also, for now, this is just a path. It doesn't mean anything. We have to add another uh, scene here. This is path follow here. And I'm going to call this path to follow. And also here, path to, sorry, uh, path to well, now I can see that I messed up the points here because it doesn't feel like it ends in the proper place. Uh, yes, let's add one more point. This is minus 3036 minus 195. Okay, now it's better. Uh, and what will we have the UFO spawner, which is going to control our UFO, and we also need also need the UFO itself. So let's create new scene for that, and that's also gonna be um, Aria two D. Rename this to UFO. Um, let's add a sprite, sprite to D, and this is going to be UFO. Okay, you can see it on the screen. Uh, do we need anything change here? We need to um, set up the collision, of course. So uh, I think that the looking at the shape of this, the Collision shape should be um, the capsule. So, collision shape to D. Let's find a capsule here. And we have to manipulate it slightly to make it look good enough. So, I believe that 8.3 here, the height should be 60. And uh, one thing we have to do is we have to rotate it. Um, maybe bring it down a notch. Okay, this is good enough for the collision shape. Let's save this as UFO. Okay. Um, one thing I know we're going to need here is our um, explosion particles, right? to also explode whenever this is getting hit and uh, let's see uh, we need to add a shooting timer for it to shoot uh, but this can be a little bit later let's start coding our ufo uh, so um Let's add a class name, UFO. Let's get the reference to particles because we will need that. Okay. Um, we will need the information about the, the uh, bullets. So export, because we would like to shoot that. Um, and for now, 
it's gonna be nothing and also we need the path to follow okay um we need a speed we need um we need the information about the current point that we are in on our current point on path i'm going to set this to zero because we're starting there um and Uh, we need a uh, pipe here, so that's going to be path scene. I believe this is all. And we will need... What else do we need? Uh, we need ability to move. So let's go to process. And... First, let's check if we have a path, because if not, that's going to be like a problem. Uh, if we don't, just return do nothing. Then we can calculate the progress. Uh, so this is a progress um, across given path. So it's delta times speed. I can just say path progress progress we can highlight this and check the dogs the distance along the path in pixels perfect and you could also use progress ratio which goes from 0 to 1 um, let's go to UFO and this is uh, delta I mean this is just uh, progress we did in the current frame uh cool so let's actually try and move this so we have ufo ufo spawner and we're gonna need a script here so ufo spawner create and let's start hacking so we'll need a spawner here because in the game you will see that the UFO uh, is being spawned in some increments of time. So I'm going to add the timer here. Uh, let's maybe bring that up just for fun. And let's see at the configuration. This is going to be one shot. And it's going to have a script of, it on its, of its own. So attach a script. And uh, I'm going to call this just UFO timer. Cool. So let's start by adding a class name. Maybe here, class name, mm, UFO timer. And we're going to have here a minimal time after which we spawn the UFO. Let's set this to five and then maximal time. So we're gonna spawn a UFO somewhere in between those values, between five and 15 seconds. Here I'm gonna just create a function, let's get rid of that, and I'm going to call this setup timer, which will as you probably have guessed it, it will set up our timer. So get rid of that and set up timer. Um, and so let's say the timeout value is a random value in range between minimal time and maximal time. With that, set self wait time to timeout value and self start and this is how you can um, randomize the the amount of time it's gonna take your timer to run and we also set up 
this as a separate faction because um, for each uh, UFO spawn, we would like to have a little bit of randomization. So maybe first UFO that will show to a player is going to spawn after 6 seconds, but after that the second maybe is going to show after 14 seconds. Okay, cool. We have that and we can code our UFO spawner now. Okay, so let's focus on our UFO spawner. Um, it's not going to be really hard, I hope. So, what we need is, of course, the reference to UFO. Uh, I mean, UFO scene. Then we need a reference to timer. Uh, so timer uh, and then a reference to uh, our paths so top path and these are the paths to follow so bottom uh, I mean that should be top uh, yes and then bottom path is bottom path to follow cool so, um, already we need to basically connect to the timeout signal and call spawn UFO. And then we need to spawn the UFO. Uh, spawn UFO. Okay, and the UFO is, of course, the UFO, UFO, UFO scene instantiate um, as UFO. We have to choose the path to follow. So, path to follow is going to be equal top path. And we're going to randomize this. Is run F. Point five else choose the bottom path as path for to D. So this is like the ternary expression. Oh, and this is not um, this is of course already right. So path to follow should be top path if um, round F returns something greater than point five, and that's going to return from the range of 0 to 1, so we're good there, else if that's not true, return bottom path. Cool. Um, we're going to set the path to follow progress to 0, just to reset this. We're going to say UFO path is equal to path follow. Uh, we're going to say add a child. Add child. Um, UFO. Okay, and uh, we don't want to add the UFO. To a path that already has a UFO. That shouldn't happen, but we can safeguard against it with path to follow, get child count. If it's not equal to zero, it's return. Return. Cool, and then after we do that, we say timer. Setup timer. Oh, we have to cast it here. Setup timer uh, and timer start just to restart the timer. And this basically 
hopefully should work. Let's try this. So we have the reference here. Uh, let's see whether we get some UFO. Moving across our screen. Oh, and we have a problem. Instantiate of. Okay, so this is actually getting called. The problem is that we did not pass the reference to UFO scene. So let's grab that and pass this. And maybe for now, let's change the timer here to be from 3 to 10. And let's see whether we get our UFO moving somewhere. Mm. Let's check the remote, let's check the main UFO spawner. And yeah, we have the UFO, okay. Uh, so it was added. The problem is it's not being removed, right? So that's one problem. And also we probably need to check the position of, or do we need it? No, not really. Let's go to 2D. This looks correct. This also looks correct, even though it moves, it is, the path is a little off bound, but that's not a problem. But we have to get rid of our UFO once it moves um, itself off the screen. So in our UFO, we're going to add a visible on screen notifier. Uh, and we need basically information about screen exited, right? So let's try this um, screen exited, connect, connect this to UFO. Here we should call QE3. Right, makes sense. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go to remote. We're looking for our paths to follow and let's see where this actually so shows on the screen. And it does. However, and there's the second. The problem is that they're not visible. So are they not moving and i might know what might be the problem if we go to our ufo and the speed is zero so it's not gonna move right uh let's try this again and yeah, okay, we have the UFO, uh, but <laughs> as you can see, uh, it's upside down for some reason. Okay, cool. And again, we have another UFO, but it's also upside down. Uh, so let's see what's up with that. Uh, let's go to UFO scene, to d uh, Let's check the orientation of our UFO. And yeah, you can you can see that uh, the positive axis is not correct. So this might be due to the path, but I'm not really sure. So if we can, uh, we'll just rotating it. Is this going to fix the issue? It feels stupid to do it like this. Uh, yeah, but that's probably going to impact the, mm, the way we're shooting. 
So let's see what's up with that. Okay, so I think the easiest way to fix that, fix that is actually going to, uh, for any reason we have a rotation here, and I don't want that, and probably here is gonna be the same. So now we have the Y positive axis facing in a proper way. So if we take a look at our UFO right now, uh, we can just get one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, but there's uh, one thing here you can see uh, it changes its direction. I would rather have it stay it flat when it moves and just follow the path. So let's see about what we can do here. Um, let's see. Let's close that curve. Um, and we should have the ability to lock the rotation somewhere. Um, like log D, where can we find this? So if you go to the path to follow, here's the, here's the rotate property. And if we disable this, now it shouldn't rotate along the path, but just stay flat horizontally. So let's wait for that. And okay, it does not rotate, which is good. So let's see. We should probably set the rotation to 118 here and 180 here. Okay, and now we should be all good. Well, this is going to be, yeah, okay, cool. Now it doesn't rotate and it just horizontally flat. Cool. Okay, we need to work a little bit more on our UFO. So... Probably I would like to give it ability to shoot. And we already have a bullet. So we can reuse that, but we have to be smart about it. So let's go to our UFO. Um, and let's see. We will need a shooting timer. So add a child node type timer. Call this shooting timer let's configure it so we will do auto start and maybe two seconds or maybe one and a half cool let's reference that and so on ready shooting timer is equal to Shooting timer uh, and on the ready. Ready. Uh, we will have shooting timer, timeout, connect to shoot. Um, cool. And we need to write that function. Mm, shoot. So uh, we will need the reference to a bullet scene, right? And we can reuse that, but that's gonna actually cause some problems because uh, we're using the same scene, bullet scene. Let me open that um, for uh, shooting for a player, but also for UFO. 
And what we have to do to make it work properly is to change the layer of our bullet from 2 to 5. And probably we need also ability to collide with uh, our player. So let's change the mask and set it to 1. And then in our UFO, um, in our UFO we provided the bullet scene. Okay, so let's instantiate the bullet. Bullet is equal to bullet scene instantiate as bullet and then we can manually change the uh, layer of that from so we will remove this from um, the player bullet so set the layer um, number two to zero so disable it and enable the um, UFO bullet, right? So set collision layer value 5 to 1. Right, and if we take a look again, that's gonna disable that layer and enable UFO bullet, which is what we wanted. Uh, cool. Now, what we have to do is get three root at child bullet uh, bullet position is going to be vector uh, basically global position so the position of our ufo and bullet and we need a direction and i'm going to create a function here called get random come on run random shot direction which will uh, return the vector um, 2 uh, and yeah it's gonna be the direction of our shoot shot bank um, get random shot direction so we have to know because we have let's use paint again uh we have two paths right one in the bottom one in the top and we will have our wonderful ufo on the um top path or in the bottom path and if we're in the top path we can assume that the most of our um, other entities will be at the bottom. So we should shoot down. And when we're moving along the sorry, bottom path, we should shoot up because that's where the most of our entities can be. So we have to differentiate between that. So for now, we have to know whether we are on the top or bottom path. And this is simple because we can get node Y position or rather origin, which is going to be get global transform. And we can get the access to origin and Y. And we can get information about the screen height, which is get viewport um, get visible rect size y and now we can decide whether we should shoot down or up so should shot down is equal to node y uh, being less or equal to screen height divided by 2 okay and now we can decide whether we should how to shoot so the angle to which we should shoot so like the direction of our bullet is degrees to radiance grand 
random from range and I'm going to pass 45 to 135. So take the random radian value from that degrees uh, 45 to 135 and if we use paint again and if we draw a circle right so 35 is gonna be like from here i believe this is 90 this is 90 this is 135 okay and then uh, we also have but also remember that ooh, this is all pointed downwards so this is like everything is rotated right and then on the other side we have the value of 225 right to 135 so it's gonna be 135 180 to 2 5 here would be 270 right but it's all rotated so um i can just say return vector 2 and we need values for that so of course it's not the angle but rather cosinus and sinus of angle and then uh, else uh, we basically just change the um, degrees so angle is going to be degrees to radians random from range 2 to 5 oh, sorry 3 1 5 right so actually I made a mistake because um, for our second case 2 to 5 would be from here here is 2 7 0 here is 3 1 5 here is 3 60 and here we have 45 1 35 and here is 2 2 5 so and of course as i mentioned this is rotated downwards right so um actually these values for are for down these values are for up and they're of course on the opposite sides so 2 to 5 3 1 5 and basically do the same um yeah that should work so that's the bullet direction and now our ufo should shoot yes this is correct so let's see where this actually happens if we can get some ufo on the screen yeah it is shooting the question is whether that shot yeah it collides with asteroids perfect cool uh, so let's try and test this again and see whether this will collide with me so i will try to uh, to be shot by a bullet um, but i will assume it's going to work right right and uh, you could see we have two ufos um in a uh, in a, a screen this is fine but if you could if you would like to uh, omit that issue of having the two of you two ufos at the very same time you can just bump up the minimal time and maximal time cool so we have ufo that is shooting one problem though that i would like to check is whether the ufo is actually being removed from the tree once it left the um the um screen so let's see let's wait for that we have a ufo right here and what happens if it's 
away from our screen. Uh, as you can see, it stays in the memory. Uh, no, now we have two UFOs. Yeah, it's being removed. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, because we have that uh, visible on screen, not a fire. Cool, so we have UFO. Uh, we have our wonderful um, our wonderful asteroids being splitted. What I would like to handle now is um, the likes of our player, because uh, for now, if we we crash into asteroid or we're getting hit by UFO, that's the end of the game. But we can change it a little bit, so I can go to main and I'm gonna add another note and I'm gonna call this. Uh, it's going to be just a note and a, oops, it shouldn't be a child of that. It should be a child of main. I'm going to call this life's manager. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a script to that. Called life's manager. Okay, cool. And as you can uh, tell, this is going to be managing our life. So let's start coding. Uh, ba -ba -ba, we need class um, class class name life's manager. Um, we need player start position, so I'm going to say var or even make it const player start position is going to be vector to zero, zero. Cool. And then we need the amount of lives. It's equal to three player scene. Mm. Yes, because we'll need to reinstantiate our player. So preload player scene and then reference to player node, which is, I believe we have, to, we cannot access the sibling to go up to a main and then access player. Cool. Um, so we'll also have, we also need probably a signal here to player life lost and lives left is going to be int. And already what we'd like to do is, uh, player we probably need information about when our player died. So let's go to our player. Uh, we can do this in, in here. So uh, how can we call this? Okay, so we need a signal here on player died. Uh, and for now it is happening uh, whenever we encounter the body here. So if body is a player, then body as player Uh, oops. Um, on player died. Emit. Cool. So that signal is gonna be called for our player whenever we hit the asteroid, and then and then in life manager, I can listen to that. Right. So let's see. 
player on uh, we need to cast this probably on player died good connect and we're gonna create a decrease lives and then I'm just gonna say decrease lives uh, is gonna just change the amount of lives uh, and we're gonna re-emit another signal but this time with information about the lives left um, and if lives left is not equal to zero we're gonna re-instantiate our player uh, let's get rid of that and we have of course to emit so player uh, is a player sin instantiate as player. Um, we have to connect to the signal again because this is a new instance. Right? Um, we have to get the tree root get node main to place it in the very same spot in our tree um, player global position should be equal to player start position okay uh, let's see this now okay I cannot call method add child on null value because it's called main let's try this again okay cool now you can see we were respawned so this is perfect um what should happen though is 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 we should probably start some kind of, we should make our player invincible for a few seconds after respawn so whenever it is we just respawn the player and he gets shot or collides with asteroids he doesn't die again and you see this in many games like this invincibility frames uh, for example, um, in Dark Souls or in um, old uh, platform games. So let's think how can we actually um, do that. So in our player, um, I can do stuff like add to timers because we need timer for... Um, we will represent that as our player blinking meaning the texture turning on and off and we have uh, we need two timers one timer for the blinking meaning the switching the texture on and off and then the second timer for the whole invincibility uh, span so I'm gonna add two timers here and I'm gonna call this um, blinking Timer, and I'm gonna call this in v. Uh, sorry, that's gonna be also timer. And I'm gonna call this in bin c b l t timer. Okay, cool. And let's see. I'm gonna set the blinking timer to be 0.2, and invincibility. And you can adjust that. It's gonna be three seconds and one shot cool and i'm gonna need um few things here let's see we will need the reference to all of that so on ready invincibility timer is equal to 
invincibility timer then blinking timer is blinking timer uh, then sprite sprite is equal to sprite to d and this is fine for now and we can start hacking away so let's see um let's create a function start invincibility uh, and we need a flag here to manage that so is invincible which should be a boolean and we'll start with false and then we're gonna switch this so is invincible uh, is equal to true we're gonna start the blinking timer and we're gonna start the invincibility timer okay and we probably need to connect to this so let's get our own ready function and let's say blinking timer timeout connect toggle visibility and we're going to create that function debility and invincibility timer timeout connect stop in Vincibility. Okay, cool. And we need to create those two functions. So let's say start invincibility. No, we have that uh, toggle visibility. That's going to give us that uh, that wonderful effect. So we have the re reference to Sprite and we can just change the visibility. And sprite, if it's visible, don't make it visible. And if it is visible, uh, it, if it's not visible, then change the visibility to true and we need a column here so that was easy uh, another thing we need is um stop in vin c b l t is invincible set it to false remember to turn on the sprite because we have to reset that and then we have to do blinking timer stop and invincibility timer stop cool um this looks correct so going back to our life manager now we should be able to call player start invincibility and let's see where that works uh, and uh, invalid with value of type bool because i made a typo visible okay let's try this again let's crash into an asteroid okay and yeah we have few seconds during which um okay that did not work out so let's try this again. I'm gonna crash into asteroid, and during that time, nothing should really hit me, but I cannot show it to you. Okay, maybe now. Okay, I'm. Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. This is because here we have to check. If body is a player and 
body and body is in let's cast this body we know that's a player so let's cast this to a player is is in vin okay now you can help me out um if it's not invincible then destroy this okay let's try this now so i'm going to crash into something and now i'm invincible and i can pass through the asteroids just fine cool so these are the invincibility frames done uh, and still we have lots of stuff to do oh that's gonna be a long tutorial you guys gonna hate me no, we're good, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Um, next step is uh, probably we should be able to shoot the UFO, right? Uh, so, because I don't think this is working right now. Uh, let's see, let's decrease the speed to very slow. Okay, and we have to do something about it. Uh, okay, that's gonna be rather simple. Go to node, uh, connect to area entered, check what is the area that entered the UFO. So if area is bullet, then we can do Q3. We can Q3 the bullet. Um, and we can get the reference to expression particles and set this to emitting to true. And of course, remember to reparent that. So explosion particles reparent uh, get root okay so now we should be able to shoot down the ufo if i can just get one to show okay i can see it's coming because it's shooting outside of the screen or even two yeah okay come here you slow bastard okay and the problem is that it's not working yet uh, let's bring the speed a little bit um so why is this not working let's see our ufo Oh, because it's on the wrong layer, right? So it should live uh, on the layer number four. And it should listen to a collision with asteroid player and UFO bullet. No, no, no. And bullet. Okay, let's try this again. We need to add a little bit of testing. Okay, I can see it coming and it's still not working. Okay, let's see. Let's go to our bullet. It exists as a bullet and it listens to ufo and this is because i selected the wrong layer now we should listen to collision with the bullet let's try this one more time okay it's coming can i hit it yes okay 
this is working we can destroy this now um let's see the ufo can we should able to detect the um the collision between the asteroid and ufo so yeah ufo should collide with an asteroid right and this is area two okay so let's see um or area is asteroid and in g script you can write or or you could just like in other languages do to a vertical um, lines so this is like above your enter at least on my uh, wonderful keyboard so let's see whether they can crash and okay not lucky not this time okay they're passing each other so that's not correct so let's see the asteroid exists on layer 3 and listens for the ufo if oh well that should work so this is interesting and that's because i'm stupid we should listen for the ufo here okay let's try this again so the collision between UFO and asteroid. Oh yeah, you saw that here. Perfect. So we also have that covered. Okay, next step. Um, I would like to add very simple animation for my wonderful uh, player when he's moving forward. So go to player and here I'm going to add another sprite and I'm going to call this engine sprite. Let's go to, we have the engine throttle. So let's add that and let's, let's place this correctly. So this is like the engine exhaust, right? if that's what it's called let's position this rotate 180 maybe bring it a little bit up okay this is cool and i would like to animate this um i could just turn it on and off uh, as i did with the invincibility frames but maybe let's take a look at the another node which is animation player so let's add that and that should be a child of a player uh, and here you can see it at the bottom with the animation tab selected and I'm gonna create new animation call this engine animation here I'm gonna add the track which is a property track of engine sprite and I'm gonna search for visible here and I'm gonna say that the time of the animation is 0.5 and I'm gonna um, go here and add a key to so it's visible and then at the point 25 I'm gonna change that to not being visible and at the start add a key of it being visible so if I play this and I play this in a loop we'll see that it's popping on and off which is gonna be our very simple animation for the engine kind of cool okay so uh, what we have to do is actually use it in our player script so let's get rid of that mm, let's actually stop it okay so we 
sorry, we need the reference to the animation player. So, already of our animation player is going to be animation player and then we need to play it whenever uh, somebody presses the Y so probably here if let's try this and I'm gonna show you one issue that you might encounter here uh, if it's not equal to zero uh, we're gonna do animation player play engine animation else we're gonna do oh, we need the reference to the engine sprite too Here we have to make sure that we hide it because um, we're going to stop the animation player. But we can also stop it in a place of our animation when the engine sprite is visible and we don't want that. So let's make sure to hide it. And basically that should be it. Yeah, you can see it blinking, so it's cool. Right. This is perfect. Okay. So that's out of the way. Uh, what else do we need? We basically need two more things. One being, I would like to add some sounds to our game just for fun. Uh, and to show you how to work with sounds. So I'm gonna create new folder in our assets. New folder is called the sounds. And I'm gonna bring everything. And I've got the sounds from some, um, from some place, from some site where you can access the sounds with no um, with no license so I don't have to worry about um, sharing those with you so that would these are not um, paid you don't need to worry about using them even for your commercial game cool and let's discuss the sounds we have here we have the engine the explosion the player shot the UFO hit and the UFO shot. So now we have to figure out how to add this. Yeah. So let's start by um, adding an uh, engine player so the note we will use to play this is audio stream player 2d cool and it expects uh, a stream and i'm gonna pass the uh, i'm gonna rename it first to shoot audio player and i'm gonna pass the player shot here and you can like play with this a little bit to see what is out, what is what. Um, and yeah, basically when we are shooting, so actually that's gonna be in our shooting point, right? Because here we handle shooting, we can get on ready reference shoot audio player which is audio stream player 2d and we can find it by going up one level and going to shoot audio player um and we can just say 
shoot audio player play and that's the basics of playing a sound here so let's try this kind of cool isn't it uh, the other one is I'm gonna add is engine audio player and the problem is that we need different audio players for different sounds so that's not perfect by it is what it is so let's go to audio plus stream player 2d rename this to engine audio player pass the engine as a stream and we're gonna need to reference this in player movement so here on ready var and um, the name for that is going to be uh, engine audio player. And you will see one problem you might get with this. So this should be played inside here. Uh, so um, let's say this engine audio player play okay and then here we're going to just say engine audio player stop cool and let's play this and press w you can see you can hear rather that the sound is kind of strange and distorted right and why is this happening well basically the stream that we're player playing have some kind of length and it doesn't get a chance to play all the way through because we're like restarting it so what you hear is overlapping sound of the stream uh, being uh being played like every single frame so it, it just stops like at the very beginning and restarts and we can uh, handle that a little bit better so i can check here if it's not playing playing then play it and then if engine audio player is playing then stop it and now you will hear the whole sound way better right cool uh there are a few other things that we have to handle here uh, and this is the sound of the explosion right and the we would like to trigger the explosion sound whenever something explodes so you might think that well we can add this to um, to the player as an explosion audio player and just play this um, on destroy right or something like that the problem with that approach is that uh, whenever something is destroyed it's about to leave the tree so the audio player attached to that note is also going to be removed and the sound itself is not going to be played so actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my main and um, i'm going to add explosion audio player here so let's add that and let's add explosion audio player I'm going to to pass the explosion sound here and now we can start working so let's go to asteroid and we have on destroy here so what we need to find is the well do we need it here or maybe okay we're gonna go to asteroid spawner and play it here 
just to have uh, that only one reference to one audio player, uh, which is way, way performant than just passing audio player to each and single um, asteroid. So let's get that reference here. So already audio, let's say explosion, explosion audio player is equal to and let's see where it is so this is our live sim another sorry our asteroid spawner uh, so we have to go like i believe up or yeah up and then go for explosion audio player Cool. Uh, and now we have asteroid destroyed, so we just play this. So, version audio player play. Let's see where that works. And yeah, I can already hear it. And you can see it's really coming together. So this is cool. Okay, cool. And that's how we can play this. We probably need to play it in a few other places, so in our UFO. Uh, let's see... Here we're also going to need the reference to that. Um, so the UFO, the UFO spawner... We're going to need the information about where the UFO is being destroyed. So here in the UFO, you can just add a signal. UFO destroyed. Cool. And uh, we will just call this. So um, here. Um, UFO destroyed, emit, and UFO spawner, when we spawn the UFO, we can say UFO, um, the UFO destroyed, connect to on UFO destroyed, Um, on UFO destroyed. We also have to get the reference as we did here. So explosion and just say explosion audio player play. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, what else do we need? Probably we need in our UFO also the sound of um, the shot. So let's add a child note audio stream player UFO shot audio player and pass the UFO shot here. Oh, we also have a different sound. I could have used different audio player and audio sound here. But that's fine. Let's, let's have just one explosion. That tutorial is going to be way over three hours, so it's a detail. Um, let's get a reference to that. UFO shot audio player and that's gonna be a UFO shot audio player which is good then whenever we shoot right we should just play the sound uh, play. see how that works
Cool. It's really, the sound really brings the game together. Cool. So basically, this is all I wanted for the sounds. And the final and the last bit is uh, creating some kind of UI. So let's go to our main and let's create the UI. So I tried note and that's going to be canvas layer. Call this UI, save this and I'm going to save branch as a scene. So that's now a separate scene and let's arrange our UI. Um, so yeah, I'm going to add a first child, which is going to margin container. And then in team overrides in constants, I'm just going to set the margins to 32, 32, 32. Then I'm going to get the, what do we need? we need a label container which is going to be like um, hbox container so hbox container I'm going to call this label container and then I'm going to add label which is going to be like points label then I'm going to add um, another hbox container I'm going to call this uh, this is probably lives container sorry um, lives container and then we will need a center container uh, with another label called this game over label cool very good let's we probably have to work a little bit when it comes to plating replacing all that stuff um so let's see this is the margin container and we have to to go and tell it to occupy the whole screen then the label container um, it should be moved to the right so here um, yes and then points label should be to the top perfect lives container um well it should be here and here okay uh, and then center container as you can imagine it should be in the center game over label cool um we should probably work with a uh font and the font that I am using and also this is available for free and with commercial use is at the font folder a joystick monospace so let's bring this in and move it here cool uh, so let's start with the points label um so here and in team overrides uh, we can find the fonts and set it to can i just drag and drop it maybe perfect okay and let's set the text to zero uh it's a little small so let's change the font size to be 20. just a little bigger which is fine. Then game over label. I'm just going to place game over here and I'm going to change a few things. So font color, let's make it font color. Let's make it red. 
then um, the font again is joystick and font size is really big 120 okay cool 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 cool, cool. Um, and I believe that we should hide it for the start so now um, we have to start scripting. Okay, I will have to reference a few things around here. So um, let's get the live texture because what we are going to do is we're going to display the amount of lives player have in the top left corner so we need two basically sprites one for the empty uh one for the empty life like lost life and one for the life that pair actually has so a uh, life texture is going to be preload let's call this lives and then for empty life texture i can say that using the player, it's going to be all right. Then um, let's start by actually filling those lives. So I have to have the reference to life container. So on ready, lives container is hbox container and I can access it as a li lives lives a lives container okay this is cool and then i need to have the reference to lives manager so since our ui lives as a sibling of lives manager i can just go to the main and then search for lives manager node so um on ready uh, and say that lives manager is lives manager and this should be living up and then lives manager cool and i can say set up the initial count so this is live manager uh lives manager let's see uh lives manager life i don't know why there's no autocomplete okay but for i in range of lives count we will create the um, UI element in a loop so um, we're gonna create live texture rect and this is texture rect this is UI element and we have to set few properties here I've scroll out because that should be just lives. Cool. Um, live texture rect expand. Oh, we should call constructor here. Yep. Um, expand mode is going to be expand bit width stretch mode. Stretch mode is going to be texture rect stretch scale. Uh, live texture rect texture is going to be live texture. Uh, live texture rect custom minimum size is going to be vector 2, 42. 42 uh, lives container add 
styled live texture right okay let's see whether this works and where we will see so okay well this is bad this is horrendous okay cool 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 cool, cool. but we have something on the screen All right so probably we need to fix some stuff here uh let's go to our ui let's take a look at our uh, wonderful manager so in layout transform the position the size is crazy um and we need to change that so the y size is very big it should be zero okay so we need to shrink to beginning now yeah now this looks correct but as you can see is not updating so we have to work with that um let's see we have our lives manager and it has a signal player life loss so we need to connect to this in our ui so here uh lives oops lives manager player life lost connect to uh let's say life lost okay uh, let's write that function uh life loss takes an argument of life's left because that's what's being passed from that signal okay so what we have to do here is um change the texture of the texture rec in a given position to switch from the the live texture to empty live texture so let's find the texture rec that we want to modify so live texture rec is texture rec so live container um, get tiled and you can pass a position there so get tiled index is going to be lives left and then live texture rect tech yeah, let me see should be able to modify the texture here and change it to empty live texture also um if if lives left is equal to zero then you can turn on the game over label to which we should have the reference so on ready var um game over label which is a label you can find it game over label and one thing that you might notice is that app that you're using here to access given node is rather length rather long sorry so what you can do is right click on a given node and search for access as unique name and then you're gonna see the percent sign appear right here and what we can do instead is just uh, place a percent right here and that's gonna work and it's way nicer cool so uh, game over label visible uh, visible is true Okay, let's see where that works so i'm gonna crash that changes i'm gonna crash again 
that is still working and for the third time yeah and it's game over cool so this is working great okay uh, what else do we need we need the way to score some points for our user just for fun so i'm going to write a function here set points i'm gonna say that points is set to um, integer and we have to have a reference to the points label so access unique name points label again acts as the unique name so percent name over label uh, perfect and here we can just say points label text is equal to person d oops person d and this is formatting in JavaScript points cool so now we have to find a way to track the points, right? And I would assume that's that's when we have to go to Asteroid Spawner, right? And we need to have some values here. So let's see we need um some kind of base value for asteroids when it comes to points base asteroid points let's set this to 50. so if you shoot the standard the biggest asteroid you get 50 points that's cool and then we will need signals basically two signals so one uh, points updated so how many points have we now and then another signal to determine whether somebody well won the game okay and we will need few variables to track the, everything so points we start with zero so that's fine our total asteroids count so how many asteroids do we have in a game and then how many are already destroyed by a player destroyed asteroids count which is equal to zero and already we need to know what is the total asteroids count so this is very simple to calculate because we know that we're starting with a count like here six and then we have to know into how many in, uh, we need to know how many asteroids can be destroyed like from one asteroid so definitely the one we the biggest one that we spawn at the start which is like one right but then it can be split it into two so two times count and then if you think about it from each medium asteroid you also get another two small asteroids so plus count times four right and then if you sum it all together so this is like the big one two medium ones and four small ones from one asteroid so i can just sum it up and say times seven okay wonderful now we have to go to our asteroid destroyed and we have to update our points so this is 
plus equal base asteroid points times and I'm going to do size plus one. Okay, so the the smaller the asteroid, the smaller the asteroid, the more points it is worth. And then I'm gonna go and say points updated, emit points, and destroyed asteroid counts plus equals one. So going back to our UI we have the reference to we need a reference to asteroid spawner and this is going to be pretty similar to lives manager so maybe move it up and say on ready asteroids spawner is and let's provide the class is equal to it's the same path so we can just do asteroids spawner because if you take a look at the main this is the ui we go up one level and then go down to asteroid spawner um you could also do export references for that that's also fine so we need to connect to the signals so asteroid spawner points updated Connect set points. And let's see where that works. Uh, and it seems like it doesn't. So this isn't being called. Let's see. Points updated, asteroid spawner. Points updated this emits that should emit. So let's see whether this is being called at all. Or let's see also if this is not null. Uh, asteroid spawner is not null, so this is good. So we can get rid of that. And let's play. And okay, now we have points, which is 100. Uh, and it should pop up. So this is also being called with a correct value. But why is this not updating? Because I provided the wrong value here. That should be points label. And now it should work. Yeah. Cool. So the last thing that we'd like to do is actually win the game. So if you go to asteroid spawner, we should calculate how many asteroids were destroyed. So if destroyed asteroid count is equal to total asteroids count, we're gonna emit game one. signal, uh, I mean emit, okay, and then in UI, we can connect to that, asteroid spawner, uh, game on, uh, connect, uh, game one, Okay, and let and this is going to be our one final beautiful uh, function, and we're done. And there are some details here and there that you m might adjust or add. For example, uh, also scoring a point for UFO. Maybe there are some minor issues here and there, but well, I've been recording this whole day. So I'm going to call this done after we change a few things here. So um, game over label, we're going to say this is visible and say that this is true. And game over label, we're going to set the text to you have one. 
and then game over label we're gonna change the color so add team color over right font oops uh, font color we're gonna change this to color you can choose anyone you'd like um i went with and oh we need a comma here color i went with chart 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 trees which is like light green and let's see uh this should be on own game one cool and let's try and we think okay this is okay this is a little too big uh, but you can see it uh, working um let's see how can we fix this uh probably we could manipulate the manipulate the font size a little bit so mm, game over level at font size override um font size and probably set it to something like 90. let's try this again Okay, this is perfect. Uh, I see one issue do, though that we only spawn the UFO once, right? So, uh, the timer is probably not kicking off because it's set to one shot. So I'm going to uh, actually should be one shot right because we're setting it up mm, let's see maybe setting this to stop and then restarting it maybe that's gonna help because we should see the ufos continuously Okay, that's one from the bottom. That's one from the top. And I would expect to see another one. And there's none, so let's go to main. Oh, spawner. This is empty and this is empty. Uh, let's see. UFO spawner, timer, timeout. Oh, that's one shot. So probably, probably we have to reconnect. Let's try this again. Okay, that's one. And that's another from the top, which we didn't have before. So I'm gonna assume that... Yeah, okay, now it's correct. So this issue is fixed. This has been going for, my friends, three and a half hours, and you can extend it, add to it, do whatever you like but i'm calling this quits and i'm going to focus on the next tutorial where we will recreate another great arcade classic game in godot and i'm going to see you there goodbye